All right, guys, welcome to episode 53 of the Hops and Bops podcast. I am producer Tom. I'm Joe. I'm Mike. And I'm Trevor. And, and Trevor's here as well. He's in I, I almost walked in right on you. <laughs> so a uh, couple brand new things for this episode. Very excited. First off, we have video footage now. This is season two, oh. uh, the premiere of season two. This is a very big, uh, big step up for me. I got a whole ring light and everything. So uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with this in the future. He's really uh, taking advantage of that two-week notice of your job. <laughs> I am, you know, yeah. yeah just quit. So, um, <laughs> well. Decide to quit. <laughs> <laughs> um, only be that. So, and this is also the one-year anniversary of the podcast. We've yes, been doing this for one, one. <laughs> one year straight now. We're the number one podcast. This is what happens when you put me on campus. <laughs> <laughs> we so, sure um, we want to do this? No. <laughs> and so... Um, I, we, we've all kind of agreed collectively that um, what better way to uh, celebrate one year than to torture ourselves. Yeah. And so um, we have got All the Right Reasons, an album by Nickelback in, uh, from 2005. And um, to pair that, we have these lovely um, Four loco hard seltzers. Um, I traveled about two hours around trying to find these things. Again, uh, two-week notice. You yeah, have the time. exactly, yeah. Black um, Cherry. Yeah. And... Um, Finally found them. Shout out to Crazy Bruce's in West Hartford. Um, <coughs> they had Bruce a on the brew bash? <laughs> they, oh, yeah. they had just a uh, a shopping a shopping cart just full of them. I went over there and they they were just everywhere. And then oh I yeah, like, yeah, we need to get rid of these. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, and I talked to the, I talked to the cashier and he was like, yeah, no, these things are terrible. <laughs> I was like, don't worry, they're not uh, they're not for personal consumption. Put so. them in a the shopping cart, make it easier for the homeless to take them away. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and yeah, if you don't sell them, you can just push them out into trash <laughs> or something, and they'll find their way home. So, um, so I'm reading it right now. It's Black Cherry Cells are 12% ABV. Yep. They are 23.5 fluid ounces, so they're not quite 24 ounce cans. <laughs> they're cheaping. Uh, they're us. a half an ounce off. Oh yeah, and they were uh, for three of them. They were four dollars and ninety cents. Wow. So, yeah. Oh, uh, Jesus. I'm they're glad true. that Four Locos still stuck by there. We're going to get you as drunk as possible, as cheap as possible, which is that was a very really not a lot of uh, not a lot of action there. Oh, that, was that was a terrible pop. <laughs> it was. Uh, so it says, <laughs> oh, oh no, <laughs> no just oh, just smell God. it. It's <laughs> just, just smell it. Never good when you say just smell it. Oh, just well, give it a it smell. Smells like a lollipop went bad. Ooh, that is not a pleasant that stings smell. Your it's pungent, pungent. It is it's pungent. Than, it's a worse, formidable scent. It's worse <laughs> than the time the raccoon got in the copier. <laughs> that is worse than Sex Panther. I'm trying to think of what that actually smells like. I don't know. So it says it's black oh, cherry. It's Robitussin. Yeah, it smells like Robitussin. <laughs> so they're just ripping us off. Yeah, cherry Robitussin. Twenty three point five fluid ounces of Robitussin. And <laughs> yeah. So it says black Dubra cherry. Tussin. Go ahead, pour Dubra yours. Tussin. 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 Black cherry seltzer goes loco. This hard seltzer goes as hard as the name suggests. Tastes like the hardest seltzer in the universe, literally, with a hint of black much. cherry. <laughs> Find your four local black cherry hard seltzer and more near you. <laughs> yeah, they've got a hell of a um, a line of trash. Here. Can we can um, we just address the color of this? It's it like clear. No, it's Isn't like. If like you went to Look, the bathroom like, a few times, yeah. and this was like your third or fourth like time a going. Yellowish this is, hue. This is the color it would be. Um, right. Let's see. They have a sour mango version. Just enough for you. Oh, perfect. They Definitely. have a sour blue raz pregame. Oh, I, I like saw that. the pregame. That is almost fourteen yeah. percent. No, what's that? No, that's a nip. They, they, no, no, they're 13. like point nine percent and ten like percent. What does that mean? I got the boot oh, today. I don't know. That one's got extra percentage. <laughs> I'm not going more than the heel today. Oof. Turn it. You don't want to bubble with that. <laughs> no, yeah. All right, guys. Cheers. Oh, I'm Happy not, one uh... year, Trevor. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And, and thanks for treating me to this. Of course. Oh, of course. Beverage. Oh. <laughs> that is, that's medicine. It's robotus. <laughs> oh, God. That is, Dubra. that is straight medicine. That is... <laughs> Awful. I am just going to oh, throw out a, there. It's got a pretty good aftertaste to it. It's oh. not as bad as the smell led to at the beginning, in my opinion. Yeah, it's like watered down Robitussin. But it's not, yeah. That's pretty bad. Oh it doesn't, for a 12% seltzer, it doesn't have an overly boozy taste. It Second. just, the non boozy taste is really bad. It tastes like alcohol. Mm. Like literally, yeah. just like alcohol that you would put in medicine. Like, you're right. Well, it's it's a twelve percent seltzer too, right. so it's like it also tastes like it should just be labeled as grape. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm not getting that black cherry. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting grape. 
I think they put black Jer- cherry on the can. Black, black, Jer- black Jerry. <laughs> oh, Another character. Black <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> black cherry on the can. Um, just to attract more people than just grape. Because no one likes grape. Yeah, they probably yeah. was like, someone was like, yeah, we're going to make this grape. And then yeah. they were like... What do you? It didn't doing? test well in the focus groups. <laughs> didn't test well. We'll call it black cherry. Wait, Wait yeah. it's gonna taste the exact same. We're just gonna change the name. Black We're not even gonna change the color. Yeah, no, no. It's still, yeah, yeah, yeah. The off purple. We're gonna add a little more robot stuff. It'll be fine. So I actually have a funny uh, four local story. I was uh, visiting my buddy Andrew down in uh, Delaware. He was at University of Delaware. Uh, this was, it had to have been, I don't know, like 2010, 2009, something like that. And. Um, we drove all the way down. We hit traffic. We went the wrong way. We finally got to his house. We're like dying to go out because there's like good bars in the area, and he has the original four loco, like before they oh, yeah, before changed they it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And we just drank those pregame before we went out, and we got pretty toasted. So it's kind of interesting now, like ten years later, almost drinking these again as a seltzer. It's yeah, I mean, a little uh, PTSD. The guy who was 6'5", 260 pounds or whatever I was when I first got to UConn. Two of these, and I didn't know where I was. I, was like, <laughs> I mean, it was really... I know. For eight bucks, you could just get hammered. Yeah, you could black out for eight dollars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, uh, oh, man. Yeah. This these isn't are, sitting well. These are <laughs> yeah. Oh, those, God, I, I just smelled it again. Those the other smell. cans, those other cans are staying there. Premium malt beverage. Premium malt beverage. Oh, it's premium. It does uh, say with a hint of black cherry on the can, though. Yeah. It's all it's needed. It's really not settling well. No. No, this is like, it's... It's straight trash. It's really... <laughs> it is liquid garbage. Yeah. It's, <laughs> That's it what is. it is. I don't know what I like better, this or that lemon meringue beer. It, there's there. Uh, I'm just saying is there's a yeah. reason why it is camouflaged on the can, so, you can't so see that it. you should so not. No be one able knows to see what it. you're drinking. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe that's part of it too. If you are 19 and looking to make a splash on a Thursday night, this is the drink for you. However, oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean you're really exactly better off Duber. Oh. I take Duber and Mountain Dew over this. You know? <laughs> I mean, really though, that's mm. kind of what it tastes like. It tastes like I'm drinking like no, this is Duber hard alcohol with, yeah, with yeah, I'd like rather sugar take Duber in it. And I don't know. It's just <laughs> it's it yeah. It's Why just, is it twelve <laughs> percent? Again, people don't buy it to enjoy it. Right? <laughs> there's double IPAs that are less than that. <laughs> How are like, they making any money? Oh. oh. <laughs> well, they're not. There are three of them were four ninety. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. No, they're still in business though. How? I don't know. Well, because, I don't think they're re because they just buy them. this. I think they're. I think this was like a, a thing they did this summer and then stopped doing because well, it was tough to find for a reason. I mean, is this like the equi- This is the equivalent of Limp Biscuit going on a 2021 tour. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they came out. They played like two shows, which is releasing the alcohol. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then they canceled it because of COVID, when really all of his songs just fucking streamed through the roof. Yeah. And he made a shit ton of money. Yep. <laughs> That's all. Freddie Literally. Durst. This is the... Should have did a Limp Biscuit album. This is the Limp Biscuit. I'm going to say a Limp Biscuit album would have been more appropriate. This is the Limp Biscuit of liquid garbage. It just goes to show you that the al- the markup on like a seltzer or something like that is probably pretty high. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're selling, you know, White Claws for the same price as you'd get at like a... a Mass marketed premium beer like a Sam Adams or something yeah, you, like that. You yeah. buy one White Claw out yeah. and it's six, seven, eight bucks depending where you're going. So yeah. yeah, and I'm, I know that they're cheaper to produce the beer. Oh, for so. sure. Oh, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> so. Well, shall we? We shall. Should we continue the torture? Let's uh, let's transition over into our, our album of choice today. All um, right. All the right reasons by Nickelback. The one with the car on the cover. Song. This is their 2005 album. Yep. <laughs> they were going to do a 15th anniversary tour of it last year, but then COVID. Mm-hmm. They were going to like play the whole like album from the back. Okay. okay. Yeah. I've never... Um... I don't think you've seen them. No, 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 not them. I'm just saying, I don't know if I've ever seen a concert where they've done that, like play just one album front to back and then like... So... But I think Roger Waters. Oh, yeah. I think I saw him play The Wall. Yeah. Cool. That's cool. I know they just just put out the 15th anniversary expanded edition of this album. Yeah, that where was it's got like they, they're all remastered and uh, most of the live versions of songs with a couple other ones added. Mm-hmm. But um, we're not definitely not doing one, not doing more Nickelback than we need to. Yeah, so I will say those. though, 
I wasn't as disappointed in this particular album as I thought. No. I was going I to really I don't know about you guys. I'm just going to put that out there. Well, so I have always been of the mindset that Nickelback gets way more like flack than they really deserve. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, and not for nothing, this album sold 8 million copies. People bought this album. Yeah. yeah. You know? I have the album in my car. That's right. I forgot it. I brought the oh, CD really? of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. So you can use that for the uh, the picture the, the of picture. it. Picture. Okay. Perfect. All right. But yes, I my dad just had it for some reason. <laughs> so I have no idea why he doesn't like Nickelback, <laughs> but <laughs> that's there. So. I, th- I, I have a feeling, I think after this album was when they became the corny like Nickelback that well, we I mean, all know it, now. It's, it's almost like Rockstar kind of pushed him into that. Yeah. Not that that's necessarily like a terrible song, right. but it was almost like their pop rock song. But that then, not to jump ahead, but I, I got a whole page on rock star. <laughs> <laughs> the Wikipedia article is pretty interesting. Okay, interesting. <laughs> I, that is one of our go tos. I think a lot of the reason why they are hated is just because like this came out in two thousand and five. I think that was kind of right around where like the mainstream kind of went from rock to rap, and I feel like a lot of newer or younger listeners were like oh that was the most popular thing recently so right yeah. just hate on that right but, but also it's i mean it's not the best album no i'm not gonna, no. I'm not gonna no, give no this way. a 10 no so absolutely not yeah wow. 10 out of 5 bops would be very <laughs> oh we have we did we did well, we, we uh we converted we pivoted now. to 10 oh, out of right, 10, 10, 10 yes we were That's, having a lot of decimals so we, we decided decided we'd Whole number out of so ten. So whole number of ten is all right. Half well, I mean, you can still do yeah. a decimal, yeah. but it's fine. Yeah, you know, it's one of the it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, Nickelback. I mean, what can you say? rock, but yeah. is this really is butt rock? Yeah. yeah. In a. In the, you had mentioned this was the first album with their new yes. drummer. Yes. Yes. So before this was some guy I can't remember his name. Ryan Vickdahl. Wasn't he? Was the original drummer? The original. Yes. Then uh, Daniel, Daniel Adair. Adair from Three Doors Down. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. He was the former Three Doors Down song. Oh, okay. Which is All weird right. because I don't think I've ever heard a Three Doors Down song right. with like anything but a main drum beat. Right. <laughs> like this album has great drumming. Yeah, and, he's good. and I remember when these songs kind of came out and the music videos and everything, I was like kind of into it just from a drumming standpoint yeah. because he he's really good. So yeah, let's uh, let's just jump into the tracks then. I guess there's uh, no other way of uh, doing it. Yeah, we'll just go right in. Follow, Follow you home. home. I I mean, Maybe. it starts with a kick-ass you know drum fill. I I yeah. love it. You know, it's not corny at all. It's r- really impressive right. musically. It starts off really well. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, um, a, a great start off to any album, mm-hmm. unless a Nickelback album. Right. You know, and for that to be kind of if you're listening to the album. Your first impression of a new drummer at that time, it's like, all right, cool, all right, let, let's see what, what they have, you know. But then the, I don't know, the song kind of, ju- it just, yeah, just kind of yeah. goes, yeah, cock rock. I, I yeah. feel like they do um, a lot of that, like drum, bass, vocal, you know, where yeah. like the guitar, their guitar is pretty good, like yeah. not bad. Um, I think that their riffs are a little like crunchier and better than their solos. Their yeah. solos are kind of corny, mm-hmm. but. Um, well, they have that standard build where it's, you know, the first half of a verse is just bass and vocals, mm-hmm. and then they add in the guitar, and then they have kind of the pre-chorus and then the chorus. It's just formulaic. So, it's formulaic rock, and that's why it gets a bad rap. But it does come together well. A lot of their songs like just like kind of come together well as a, a, a good rock song, and yeah, they, they do far, follow a formula, but... It's really not until you start listening to the lyrics where you're like, okay, this is... Oh, yeah, they're awful lyrics. Yeah, no. Awful. Well, yeah, especially yeah. on this one, too. It's very, like, uh, uh, like I'll be watching you vibes, you know, yeah. like by the police. Yeah, okay, you yeah. You can dig me up a grave and try and stick me in the ground. You can tie me to the bed and try and beat me half to death, but you can never keep me down. Mm-hmm. And I'll stay alive just to follow you home, and I will survive. Weird. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have much more to say about this song. No. Yeah. Nope, yeah. Moving on. Creepy, weird, but like, yeah. It's yeah, really and then, good. yeah, I mean, I mean, that's the case for most of the album, though. It's like, and music, it's okay. Like, it's nothing that I'm gonna write home about, yeah. but just like, this. <laughs> so, if right. this is your first impression as Chad Groger as a, as a singer, you're like, okay, he's not a terrible singer, right? He's doesn't have a lot of range, but mm. he can kind of work with what he's got, you know, and. 
there's yeah. certainly yeah. worse front men out there. Yeah, because you need yeah. a little, like, you know, gruff on your voice. Like, I think, like, Bruce Springsteen does it pretty well. But he's like a, I don't know how else to put it, like a like a frat bro version of Bruce Springsteen where he kind of... <laughs> well, kind of it almost yeah, doesn't sound of, natural. Yeah, It sounds right. like he's forcing himself to yes. be raspy and have that tone, you know? Yeah. Someone should make a video like if Chad Kroger talked during the day and it's just oh, I'm sure. his yeah. singing voice yeah. but talking. Like you know Christian who, Bale and then Batman Christian <laughs> Bale. Yeah. yeah. Well, the other... <laughs> The other singer that kind of gives me that vibe with some of their stuff is uh, James Hetfield, Metallica. Yeah. You know, like, sometimes he, he, like, has to almost force that to happen, and I'm like, it wasn't necessary. Right, right. Um, Yeah, I mean, this song, I I liked how the full band kind of came in together at the beginning. Nice, big, heavy, open riff. Mm -hmm. But then again, the bass... And And the vocals vocals. at the beginning of the verse. Then the guitar comes in second half of the verse. It's just formulaic. And then... This this song kind of sounds like it should be in like a Need Need for Speed, like Hot Pursuit Hot Pursuit Two yeah, video game. Yeah. I mean know. the other thing too with it was, um, like the title, like the album's called for All the Right Reasons, yeah. and then this is Fight for All the Wrong Reasons. Right. Like, mm-hmm. Ooh, deep. Ooh, what are you doing there, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This one was less instrumentally strong than the first one. Mm-hmm. I thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a track two. Yeah. 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 But again, like. The lyrics and the, the way he just puts them out there are just so bad. Like, especially on the chorus where he's like, I guess we're stuck around so record watch us better roll. It just sounds too busy. Yeah. yeah, like yeah he's yeah, just yeah. kind of crunching them yeah. all just to fit. That is a yeah. very nickelback thing. That yeah. uh the second half of the chorus is like the kind of the busy lyrics. Yeah. And then it's open yeah. for the first half. He doesn't sound any different in any of his songs, really. No. I mean no. again, not a lot of range and he works alright with what he's got, but mm-hmm. It's well, like, even the next song, now I'm going to just jump ahead, but... Oh, there's nothing left. There's nothing left. Yeah. Like. It, 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 he sings the right. same way, even though it's a slow song. Right, yeah, I know. Like, it's bro. the same thing. At least <laughs> have some, like, like less rasp. You know? Something. It's, uh, yeah. This song, I don't know. This song's just... Oh, this song. Photograph? Uh, it's got the nostalgic feel to it. It does, I will say that. But it, once again, the lyrics are... Corny nostalgia. What the hell is on Joey's head? It's like better than the first two. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. This, yeah, I mean, this song always bothered me. It, it's. I like it for the meme. Single yeah. track three. The meme was good. Look yeah, at this it's graph. <laughs> it's my favorite. One of my favorite videos. And just sitting there holding. Oh it. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, With that like, ugly blonde hair that yep. stops at the shoulder. Just boom, <laughs> right there. Uh, but yeah. I mean, if like you're looking like it's a nostalgic song, the guitar actually goes. The instrumentals kind of go together well with it. You know, they've got that kind of a uh, clean yeah. guitar riff. That's and again, that's one of their positives. They are pretty talented musicians. They can, well, yeah, they can write good instrumentals for songs. I've actually seen video of them playing like Metallica covers and mm-hmm. concerts, mm-hmm. and they they rock out like they're playing well. Yeah. I almost feel like they fall into a semi five finger death punch area where they're all good musicians and they just write terrible music. Right. But I mean Fair. instrumentally, they actually write decent music. Yeah. You know? So they I just mean, don't have any someone else needs to write their lyrics. Pretty much. Yeah. At. That's actually yeah. the impression I and, got from this whole album. And they need, <laughs> they they need some help vocally too. Yeah. It can't be the Quintessential Nickelback yeah. singing yeah. every time, all the time. Oh, there it is. Said the word. Yeah, quintessential. Keyword. Season two, baby. Season two, baby. <laughs> Everybody does backing vocals. I don't know if I've ever even heard another voice. Or is it just I like, can't get past him? They're like so dim. They're so. Oh, they, they, yeah. They're like one decibel. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> just so they have a. Yeah, I was in there, yep. <laughs> I, I'm credited. <laughs> if you solo me out and turn the volume all the way up, you can hear me. Yeah. yeah. Did you hear that breath? That was me. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to throw it. I know it's really random, but the Japanese edition had a cover of We Will Rock You on it. Ooh, yeah. interesting. Really? I saw that. I that didn't sounds, listen to it, but I did see awesome. it. <laughs> it was only two minutes long. That's a short song. In and out. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. If you don't do We Are the Champions afterwards. It's true. Right. Even though the, that's they true, yeah. Well, they're right? definitely not the yeah. champions, so that's probably two another reason. Songs. All right. Enough of photographs. Yeah. yeah. Animals. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like this song. I me too. I like this song a lot. It's actually and I not even my... like the corny lyrics. Yeah, like I just it's I don't know. I like this song. I like again. I like the drums. I like the fast paced 
you know, tempo of the song. It's not my favorite song on the album, but it's maybe my second favorite. I just found the, because the, it was released as a single, I believe. Yeah. I just saw the, the album cover for the single, and it is just two rhinos fucking. Mm. Of All what? Right. Animals? Yeah. I think I've seen that. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's, Look at that. Here, I'll Great. see if I can I can show this to the, to the, the viewers the people at home. home. That's just the, the, the track for the, the single right there. Two it's just rhinos. Two rhinos going to town. I yeah. honestly feel like his voice fits this song. <laughs> yes. But does that make it a good song? No. Okay. I think it's yeah. just the fact that his voice fits it. Lyrically, yeah, they're not great lyrics, but they're kind of like comical because right. they're like it's, so yeah. dirty, but it's like just some of the, I don't yeah. know. That's There's another something. thing. I like this song. They, I don't know why. Well, Corny, they play but, like know, the okay, sex right. angle a lot too. On, in their yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know. I don't want to think about Chad Kroger when <laughs> when I'm thinking about sex. No. In oh. songs. He's him and Avril Lavigne. Was oh, was that a thing? He married her. They got married. Really? Man. Yeah. They were I thought she was married long. to some oh, forty-one. Yeah. He wasn't no, a skier. They were married for like a day. Oh. Yeah, it's because he wasn't a skier boy. Yeah. Oh yeah. So she oh. said, "See you later, boy." See you. <laughs> Sorry. Well thank done. You, thank Proud you. of that one. Yeah, like that. Tip of the cap. They can, um, they can yeah. actually see it. My my biggest issue with this song was the second verse, where it says, uh, "You're beside me on the seat, got your hand between my knees, and you control how fast we go by just how hard you want to squeeze." It's hard to steer when you're breathing in my ear, but I got both hands on the wheel while you got both hands on my gears. That's disgusting. Yeah, <laughs> that is that is almost as bad as this. Well, shit. this is what <laughs> it's that, a steel panther. Lyric. That, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's what it is. You don't even like realize it when you listen to the song, though. Like how sexual and like over the top these lyrics right. are. But there's no emotion in the singing. Yeah, too. it's so like if they're, if they're right. being tongue in cheek about it, like a sex panther, then it would be totally fine. But they're right. a serious like pop rock kind of yeah. sound to it. Well, not pop rock, but like. That that style, they're trying to be mainstream, right? And At least yeah. like Buck Cherry had, he put like emphasis on the sexual lyrics, the song, yeah. that, the singer in that band. Not saying yeah. they were good, I but like know. Kroger just is just monotone the yeah. whole time. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if this was mainstream, but the next song, "Saving Me," was definitely that's mainstream. Yeah. Nickelback. Animals was um, a single. I think it was it the was, second yeah. single. There were seven singles on this album. Yeah, really? Yes. Yeah, this was a big it's album. Eleven for tracks. Them. <laughs> This was a big album for them. I will say, I really like Saving Me. That's really? my favorite track. Yeah. Oh, yeah? I yeah. really like this song. It's fun to sing. Yeah. Not like him, but just in general to sing. It's yeah. a good song. I like that song. Okay. I, I don't mean, know what it is. It's Maybe a... it's nostalgia. They got some some uh, some yeah. some rose-colored glasses on, but I, I really like this song. Yeah, it, it, it's okay. I don't know. It's fun to scream sing. It, hmm. I never thought of it that way, honestly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Maybe just because I'm a vocalist, but... Yeah. I like it. What do you find in here, Mike? Uh, they divorced in 2015. I'm trying to see how long they were married. Apparently, it was a quick thing. Like Avril they, Lavigne? They were like... Like a Kim Kardashian and Chris Humphreys kind of okay. thing? Okay. They were engaged in 2012 after a month of dating. Oh, wow. Hmm. Okay. That's smart. Okay, at least they knew. <laughs> and, yeah. So, 12... They couldn't have been married for more than a couple of years at best. Perfect proposal. Oh, you doing it? Perfect proposal. I don't know. I'm reading like some fucking like People magazine bullshit now. Turn. Oh. That was her second marriage? Oh, damn. Oh, yeah. He was uh. 37. <laughs> They're 10 year difference. 10 years? Yeah. Like he's older? How old is he? Chad? Oh, in 2012, Chad. he was 37. Name. 46. Four, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it uh, doesn't get any better when it's warm. No, that's why I had to finish it now. Come on, Joe, you got this. Am I the last one? Oh, You're the last see, one. See, Avril Lavigne had a struggle with Lyme disease. Oh, uh, that's probably what did it. <laughs> oh, well done. Come on, you gotta find that zen moment. You gotta, you gotta <sighs> find peace within the pain. Can we like have another drink that's not one of these? Um, <laughs> yeah, how about a water? <laughs> yeah, I got, I got some stuff in there. Okay. Take a look. If you want to grab something, that's all you. Oh, but ooh, guys, ooh, don't ooh. worry. We ID. We they, who? They, yeah, we, that, yeah. <laughs> the can. It is literally sitting in my stomach like Ugh. as if I took like a boiling hot nipper and just swat, like drank it. So we, yeah. we, we re-upped, we, we got um to wash out the terrible flavor of the four locos, yeah. we got some uh, some little heaven IPAs. Yeah. Just because that was uh that was yeah, we could not yeah. have that sit with us for the rest of the I'm episode. I wanted it. another drink, I just didn't want another four locos. No, I couldn't. Yeah, no, that was that was rough. These are meant 
for, as you said, underage stupid kids. <clears throat> or, I mean, really, what else? You do? Alcoholics. Alcoholics, alcoholics, I guess. Well, they had a huge thing this summer of, like, or, all the seltzers, Bud Light's coming out with yeah. them, all these other kind of different companies I that mean, don't make them, make the them. Right, they're, I, all, they're all getting in on it. The it's only like time I'd drink this again would be, like, if you had a large group of people and you were all almost taking, like, a shot of it as, like, a taste this. Yeah. And even then, I don't know if I'd yeah. want to. Even then, I've already had it, so yeah. why, would I, why would I do the taste? Why would you oh, subject sometimes, yourself? Sometimes... <clears throat> That shit's gross. Yeah, no, I'm I'm not drinking that again. No. Well, what are we gonna do with the other two cans? Well, <laughs> I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna do a little mini review on a, a TikTok of the of this, and then uh, probably bury the other one. I don't know. <laughs> I I bought it so you don't Put it have in a time to. Time capsule. Exactly. They should have just let me go with the whole cart. But. Yeah. See, if three was an odd number. If you had bought four, we would have one each. If you had bought two, we would have each split one. Yeah. I'm buying it for the, the 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 main populace, so that they they uh, I'm I'm getting rid of the. Maybe we can stuff. do a maybe giveaway can, with the other. One. Well, maybe you can. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like keep the full <laughs> one, and maybe it's going to be a collector's item someday. I don't know. Maybe it is the camo can. It's, it's pretty true. aesthetic. It's it is true. a premium alcoholic <laughs> beverage. It's yeah. it's premium. That's right. You can't forget that. So. All right. So saving me, kind of their. Well, that was a single, right? It was. Yeah, yeah, I mean, one a of lot seven, of them. Yeah, seven, seven out of there, eleven yeah. chance. So that was their fourth but, single. I mean, it was made to be a single. Yeah, that, that's that's that, like. that song. I mean, more than half of the albums made to be a single. They all sound yeah like a single. I did write that at this point in time, I was losing interest in the album. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, you go to that. Well, far and away far and away. save and uh, uh, like sorry, song. saving me and far away is a tough back to back. They're they're like stadium ballads. Yeah. But this when Far Away is just a little too like downtrodden. Far though. Away is like your redneck like wedding first song. Yeah, I mean <laughs> Far Away <laughs> sounds like a three doors down song kind of. It it does. I mean you it's You know what I mean? Like that bit. kind of southern because they're a southern band and they're Canadian. No, yeah. yeah. Nickelback. Nickelback. Uh uh Nickelback. Three Doors Down. So three Doors Down. What are like Canadian southern. rednecks called? Yeah. Uh, uh, Mounties? <laughs> those, those are the police guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, but they're in the woods. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's far away as a Nickelback love song, right? Yeah. yeah. And when you say Nickelback... <laughs> That's a cursed combination. When you say Nickelback <laughs> love song, you're like, oh my God. You know what? Far away? Maybe yeah, this was wasn't Chad Kroger and Avril Lavigne's wedding song. Could oh, at some point. Well, yeah. I don't know, 2005, a little it's, early. Yeah, but you it's don't think you song. don't think oh, you're Chad saying Kroger later. would have pulled yeah. that from the archives That's true. for his own wedding song? Did he play his own wedding? And then he probably played it, and he probably sang it while he danced. He actually probably made her dance with someone else while he sang it. Was the band <laughs> playing like the rest of the Nacklebick? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. No, no doubt. <laughs> so, I mean, but, in terms of the entire album, "Far Away" is not the worst song. No, but like, eh, I'm not gonna go out of my way to listen to it too much. No. Yeah. Although I do remember it being it's on cute. the radio. Yeah, oh yeah. It's cute. Right there. <laughs> I will it's, say it was funny, like so many of these, like Saving Me Far Away, that like I didn't even realize were all on the same album because yeah. I only ever heard them on the radio. Right. And then all I'm listening to it and I'm like, oh, okay. Oh yeah, I know that song. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're all the on one album. Yeah. yeah. This was their, a big album for them. Yeah, yeah, I think it's one of their most popular albums. Yeah. Eight yeah. million copies. It's one of the best selling rock albums, like. I'm yeah, one of them. Period. <laughs> Dude, your father is one. <laughs> yeah. In the car. Oof. Yeah. I will say, kind of the ebbs and flows of this album kind of works well. Like, I'm not a big fan of having Saving Me and Far Away back to back, but they have like a couple like heavy rock and then they you know slow it down and then I don't, it, the, the song placement, which we talked about a lot, kind of worked for me. Yeah. If, if I, I'm, I'm trying to find a positive. <laughs> It well, could be worse. You're yeah. not going to find one in the next song no, because the next no, song got my worst song of the album. It's, yeah, it's, it's really not good. I mean, it's so trashy. And, like, normally when Nickelback is trashy, at least, like, the music, like, the instrumentals are good. Right. It sounds like you're this playing it on that. YouTube in, like, 1998. When you have dial-up internet, so it's, like almost loading and like you're yeah. getting that little <laughs> not bad enough to pause but not good enough to like really stream it yeah. right yeah it's coming off of new grounds <laughs> well this is like a first this, this was a napster download yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is that <Dat> piff <laughs> <laughs> well this is uh -huh. like a b-side well like we've had yeah. a string of maybe like four singles already yeah, this, was this, this was a single this was a single next contestant was wasn't it 
I don't think so. Ugh, no. I yeah. thought it's been on the radio. No. No. It's about a man who is ready at any possible moment to fight anyone who tries to steal his girl away from him. That's a Chad Kroger move, right? Yeah. There. Yeah. yeah. This is this is exemplifying anyone that listens to Nickelback. <laughs> yeah. to do yeah. something like that. After so. they drank a Four Loco. <laughs> hey, yeah. I'm all I mean, jacked up on Black Cherry Four Loco. I wrote down this song is why people hate Nickelback. Yeah, this is true. And yeah. yeah, this song. If, for, if, if this else. was the only one you've heard, mm-hmm. then yeah. Oh, it's rough. Yeah. yeah, worst lyrics on an album that doesn't really have strong lyrics. <laughs> in the end, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. This is like the worst of the worst for yeah. for this album. This is bad. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I, I will agree on. with that. Next, yeah, next on. contest to the S- best song on the album. Side of a bullet. Love it. Okay. Couple yeah. reasons. Okay, number one, it's written about Dimebag Daryl. Okay. Okay. Uh, he had died a year earlier, 04. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. December of 04. Yeah, I remember that. Um, and then my only claim to fame of knowing anything about this album is that they wrote this song using a Dimebag Daryl sample solo. Mm-hmm. So he is the one who played the solo in this song. That he got permission from Vinnie Paul to use, to supposedly. Use. So. He wanted uh, Vinnie Paul to play on this song. And Vinnie Paul actually heard. Well, this was an interview with Chad Kroger, so take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> but he said that he asked Vinnie Paul if he wanted to play on this song. He's like, here's the drum track we got. Just, you know, re-record it and do whatever you want. Vinnie Paul listened to the drum track and said, well, it's pretty good as is. So okay. well, maybe Vinnie um, Paul was being lazy. Yeah. Maybe that never happened at all. And yeah. Jack maybe was Vinnie flying. Paul was I like, there's no way I'm putting my name on a Nickelback right. album. Nickelback. But... <laughs> He I did. I mean, uh, according again. Well, yeah, because he Chad owns Kroger, all Dimebag's rights right yeah. when he died. So. They they were Nickelback fans supposedly. They liked the music and instrumentally. I mean, I can see why. Other than your very few like Zach Wild hates Limp Biscuit kind of like feuds. Yeah. Are there really many bands out there though that don't yeah. claim to like the other bands? Yeah, there's Corey Taylor and Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got like Black Label Society or, or Zach Wild and Limp Bizkit. Yeah. You can't stand him. Like, Is yeah. that really? I don't know if that. There's a live album in the middle of one of the songs that stops and he just goes, Limp Bizkit sucks fucking dick and they come back <laughs> in. Yeah, so there's a little animosity there I think. That's funny. But I mean, yeah, the the song has an interesting, you know, an interesting backstory to it. Yeah, which is yeah. kind of, I think, a lot of why I do enjoy it as well, just because it does have, for once, there's a song with a little extra meaning behind it, right? Like, yeah, and a little and, extra some, yeah, something there too. And, I mean, and let's be honest, the lyrics actually on this one aren't bad, because they're lyrics about basically this guy who went and shot Dimebag, and then, mm-hmm. you know, almost yeah. in return saying like. That's what's gonna happen back on you know. Yeah, it's it's from the perspective of someone who you know was like a Pantera fan. Yeah, and essentially was pissed off and wanted to kill the guy yeah. who. Yeah, you know, yeah. I just didn't, didn't make it out anyway. But yeah, like, I just got to the solo as I'm listening, and I can't believe I never. It's picked up on that. Went to central oh, yeah. dime back. Yeah, it definitely on is. The pinch harmonics with, yeah. yeah. uh, yeah. with the whammy and that's everything. cool. I, I never yeah. knew that. All right, props to them. All right, that might change some of my. Uh, no. Conclusions here. Okay, today. okay. So yeah, this is my. This is your your top. This is my, this is my number one. Yeah, makes sense. It's my number one. Well, what about if everyone cared, Mike? If everyone cared, then no one would die, right? Allegedly. Yeah. This was a See, this one. Like this, this was a single. Yeah. Yes. Everyone. Yeah. Cared. This. Yeah. I remember this one the, on the radio. Uh, sixth Buzz, single. Lit, Side reading, of a oh, bullet with Bears, Team Bears. An uplifting Nickelback song. Which is kind of interesting, though. Like you have all these songs, animals. Really, animals would be the only one that I say is similar to Side of a Bullet. Like, yeah, fast-paced rock. Side of a yeah. Bullet, and again, Dimebag died a year before this release. Mm-hmm. You almost would think they'd kind of push Side of a Bullet to come out a little earlier. Yeah. Instead, it's their last single released three years after his death. I think because out of all of that, it's the least kind of poppy sounding. It's not the song written for the radio. No, it's not yeah. radio friendly. I agree. No, well, neither is Animals, I thought, but... Yeah, but at least Animals has that catchy kind of hook and, cor- and yeah, chorus, yeah, too, yeah. you know? This yeah. is rough. This is just I still smell it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, yeah. Like, yeah. like, you already, <laughs> in this... <laughs> Chad. <laughs> in this album, you already had... Wait, go what, back to are that Are we list. not going to say anything about his name being Chad? Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> I know, Chad. We're real Chad right And we're now. real Chads right now, and Brad's <laughs> drinking these seltzers. Um... <laughs> So this song was if everyone cared. We already have far away, 
We already and have saving me. Saving me. And photograph. You don't need another song like this. And this was a single as well. Mm-hmm. I think it was just like a sign of the times. Like yeah. they kind of had this draw of having a, a rock stadium ballad. version of a ballad. Mm-hmm. But it it doesn't age well, especially no. for this one. No. Right. Um I do still I don't there's something almost nostalgic about it. I don't I, yeah. it was just on when I was a bit younger and still listening to the radio. I think it's just the fact mm-hmm. that one it's not super difficult to sing. And two, you know the lyrics because they're so bad. They just easy yeah, yeah, right. Like you know what it's I mean. Simple. Like they're catchy, but they're not good. Right. There's something about it. Um, um, someone that you're with is right after that. I love this. This song. one was yeah. surprisingly good. Really, yeah. like, this is really my really good. This, I'm mm-hmm. gonna say this is my favorite song. In the really? Mm-hmm. Okay. This We're deep, supposed to save us to the end. I know, I know. Can I? But I'm. I don't know. I'm <laughs> trying to get the positives out there. Yeah. Okay. I love this song. I had never heard it before. It's not a single. It's deep. It's deep in the album, and I, I, I kind of like the, like wide open chorus, and the melody of it. I really like it. I don't know what it is. I, I, I just, I really like this song. The lyrics are good. It drives. The music is good. Yeah. You know, it's fast paced, mm-hmm. but not like overly busy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, if they had made more songs like this, people wouldn't view them like Nickelback, right? Right. Yeah. You know, it's really, it's, it's very well done. Um, and I do remember listening to this because I was, you know, alive in 2005 or whenever this album came out. <laughs> this, this, is, I'm with you, Joe. It's my favorite song on the album. Oh, it's cool, the one right. that I used to play over and yeah. over again. It's one that I would have chosen for our guilty pleasures if it, we weren't if, doing it now. Oh, so. oh, all right. Nice. So now, Rockstar, I, I mean, yeah, Rockstar. Um, two things, just two things. Number one, it, it's a corny song, but... Yeah, I was always a fan of. I don't know. It was just cleverly written. The the content of it, um, he, like all of his references and you know things like that. And then number two, for it being acoustic and slower and everything, it was just so different than the rest of the album that it made for a great closer. I think, and I kind of like it in that respect. And it, I thought it closed the album pretty well. Um, so that's kind of my take on this song. Yeah, I mean, I got to say, it is. It's catchy. No matter whether you like it or not, you sing it. Right? Yeah. You, you know the lyrics, you sing it. They are kind of corny. Should have had you guys but... over my house. <laughs> Ain't no noise going on over there. <laughs> got some seagulls upstairs. Uh, but it, it is what it is. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah no, I'm not. Yeah. No, right. I'm not saying it's like a master class in songwriting. But... No. The fact that it was just so different than the rest when everything else was just so similar. Yeah. I thought it ended the album well. As the last well two as it songs. could. The last two yeah, songs. Yeah, exactly. Really... And for it to come after that kind of ghost song mm-hmm. that I never knew of, it, it kind of ended well for me. Trevor. Trevor. Paige. Uh, there's, there's a lot going on in this song. Yeah. I mean, one, you got Billy Gibbons in it, right? For the, He's the one who's actually yeah. talking and yeah. saying, you know, like, that's <laughs> idea. Who, you know, is, is literally the definition of a rock star. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was the number one song of 2007, according to Rolling Stone. Oh, okay. It was the number two worst song of all time, according to BuzzFeed. <laughs> yeah. wow. so who was number one? I don't know. I'll look it up. Right. I'll do some yeah. editing. Yeah, get on that. And according to the Wikipedia page, there's a sea shanty version of this song. Oh. I have heard that. Wow. I think it just came out. I, I've, I don't know. I've heard it. I well, listened about 30 seconds. I was like, yeah, this, this okay. is enough for me. I mean, in a nutshell, this song sums up the polarizing yeah. aspect of Nickelback. Number you one either is... either uh, love them or you hate them. Yeah. 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 By the way, the BuzzFeed number one worst song is uh, Nookie by Limp Bizkit. Ooh. Yeah. Did okay. it all for the yeah, Nookie. I got beat out by Nookie. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah, they're, it's, you know, one one. Man, we could probably argue that and those, and these are the top two, like, most... Shit on bands. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. easy, yeah. easy. But I mean, it's it, it sums up Nickelback. It's yeah, deal. it really does. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> and there you go. Please, yes. <laughs> yes. Can't yes. take any more. <laughs> Put all four locos. <laughs> I need a good drink and some and some music. <laughs> That's not yeah, nice. I know. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Overall <laughs> thoughts, guys. Uh, quick, quick, quick. Good, summer. not great. Yeah, I mean, it was good, not great. Like I said at the beginning, it, it was better than I thought it was going to be. I think some of their later albums are even, I haven't heard them, but I think they're worse. I think they yeah. are 
the Nickelback that we're expecting. Yeah. But this was better than I thought. Good, not great, and good is being generous. Yeah. All well, lyrics are written. Yeah. Right. My friend called me in the middle of that. I just want to make sure it's still recording. Okay, yeah, we're good. Sorry, Paul called me in the middle of that. Canarchy? Paul, Paul Canarchy, yeah. No, right. Oh, so we just had to take a little break. Paul Canarchy called in the middle of uh, that. We want to make sure it was still yes. recording. Yes, we did. Yes. <laughs> um, all lyrics are written by Chad Kroger. So the terrible lyrics are all written by him. Um, oh, so he's the, he's the one to blame. He is. Yep. Um, Chad. So, yeah. Oh, Chad. I, I mean, are we just throwing out the, the album ratings at this point? Like, are we ready to go? Well, I mean, we're going we'll do tracks, tracks first. Tracks, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm at a loss I, with this whole thing. I got nothing else to say on the, on the whole. Yeah. To summarize, this is an instrumentally talented band. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah. And... I don't think people hate Nickelback. I think people hate Chad Kroger. Yeah. That's and fair, yes. Fair, yes. You but know. he is Nickelback. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They, they are in, one in, of in the, the In the limelight, you know. Right. I mean, I mean, realistically, do you know anyone else? Like, you don't know right. his brother. No. Nope. You don't know that he plays bass. Right. Maybe it's because he plays bass, but... Yeah. It's all about Chad Kroger. Is yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, some of the hate they get is justified. Some of it isn't. A, a lot of it yeah. is justified. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's it, it's a band that I think could make good music if they wanted to, but they don't want to. <laughs> I think they're, I think, they're, I think their label, their producer, well, has the that fit into too, this they're on, formula. Uh, Roadrunner Records, yeah. which usually puts out a lot of like rock. That's, that's heavier. That's, that's heavy. Yeah. 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 Heavy, so it's uh, just an interesting. Label. This is like maybe their mainstream. Their department. mainstream. Yeah. <laughs> this is our mainstream yeah. band. <laughs> They're they're like fifth floor material. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Corner off. Uh, all right. Uh, all right. Tracks. Trevor, you're the guest. Start Please. it off. Favorite track. Favorite track. Uh, well, my favorite and my sleepy dark horse are the same. It's someone that you're with. Yeah. You know. I mean, it's really underrated. It it's got decent lyrics. It's got a good catchy you know instrumental to it. It's something that. I, I would even say is a good song. Okay. Um, but uh, I guess the drawback is it's really not like Nickelback, so they never released it as an album, and nobody really knows what it is. Yeah. But, I mean, that's that's the definition of a dark horse, right? Or, or really yeah. a favorite or whatever. I mean, it's it's the best song on the album to me. Okay. I and mean, it's the one that I actually go out of my way to listen to. So. Nice. That's the, the most you can ask for. That's <laughs> yeah. it. My number one side of a bullet, like I said before, I just I like the background story to it. I love that it actually has a Dimebag Darrow solo in it. I thought the lyrics actually weren't as corny and bad as some of the other songs because it wasn't pushing just like sex or you know some yeah. of their things that like they really aren't obviously good at. Oh, exactly. <laughs> the seg. Oh. Oh. Yeah, oh. so I just... I, 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 <laughs> Look at this photograph. Oh. Yeah, I, I just... I thought that was a pretty well-written song. Especially when you think about it, they wrote the song... They had to have written the song around the solo. Right. You know? Yeah. So that's Definitely. kind of a... a, if that's a what they, it's not an easy thing You can't recreate to, that. That's not so. an easy thing to do either. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Trevor, I agree with... Pretty much all that you said, my favorite track on the album is Someone That You're With. Um, but it, it is actually like the perfect pick for a Sleepy Dark Horse because it's not a single. It's the second to last track on an album that you probably didn't even make it to because the first half is like almost all the singles and then it's garbage from there. Um, but I really like that song. I think it's catchy. It, it has a good driving pulse. I actually added it to my The Playlist playlist Whoa. yeah i know there's a i i've been making this thing i've had this thing since high school and i'm like never put a nickelback song in there mm -hmm. today's the day that's right. on there today's the day. wow so, okay. there it is someone nice. that you're with it's actually a really good rock song nice. for the time um i went with saving me and that's just because i think it's mainly just a nostalgic thing yeah. i i kind of grew up listening to it and mm -hmm. in a vacuum it's not necessarily the best song on the entire album but I think I just like it from the, the vocal standpoint. If you don't push it too much like he does, if you don't get too growly with it, I think it is a pretty decent song that they put out. And um, I just like to sing it while I'm, while I'm driving. So that's, uh, that's my favorite. So, All right. Yeah. What about your bottom? Uh, next contestant. There's really not a lot of uh, 
uh, redeeming value from that song at all. Yeah. The, the the music was bad. The singing was bad. The lyrics were were cringe, really cringe. And um, yeah, I'm, I'd be okay with never listening to that again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I'm in agreement. That was easily the worst song in an album that really could have had two or three of them. <laughs> yep. You know? Yep. I mean, yeah. It, it there was yeah there was no redeemable factor. The lyrics were awful. Yeah. And you know that's. I think that's why people don't like Nickelback. It's not the music. Mm-hmm. It's not like the drums or the guitar or the fact that Chad Kroger has no vocal range. It's it's the lyrics, and this really exemplifies that. Yeah, I'm going to change it up. Ooh. Would you? I despise Photograph. <laughs> okay, that's, that's, that that's reasonable. I Very fair. absolutely hate that song. Very I think fair. it's... When it comes to... Okay, maybe Next Contestant has the worst overall lyrics, like a... Like mm-hmm. a like a five-year-old wrote them, but photograph is just the corniest. Yeah, there is not. I, I don't it's know horrendous. one redeeming factor about that song. It is. It is just horrendous. Uh, I actually have a tie for my bottom song, so I don't usually shocker. have that. <laughs> for my <laughs> even the guest says shocker. He knows. <laughs> he knows. He knows the lower <laughs> Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I'm going with a couple of the ballads because I just think they're unnecessary and poorly made. Uh, saving me and uh, what's the other one? Far away. If everyone cared. Oh, yeah. if everyone cared. Yeah, far away. I could hear like if I don't know if a couple likes that first song. It is a good sounding like dance song. I, I mean, come on, that was Chad Navarro's. That was their song. Was right. Now, we already far away. We already addressed that. <laughs> but saving me, the the key it's in or the melody of it never really got my eardrums going. I I don't like that. And then if everyone cared, it was just like a second rate far away. Like it just, mm-hmm. come on, you already had a couple of those already. And also photograph, like you can count that as a ballad too. I just thought it was so unnecessary towards the end of just a only a eleven track album. So yeah. uh, I can do away with those two, not to mention a couple others. Uh, but those are the, my bottom. Cool. Sleepy Dark Horse. Yes, please. Yeah. I'm gonna go with side of a bullet. I think right. I think the uh, dime bag guitar solo is a great X factor for a band that probably needs the credibility. Yeah. yeah. Without that solo, that's just another second rate song in my opinion. Yeah. Um, right. You know, but it has good crunchy guitar work as a lot of the songs mm-hmm. do. But having that solo in there is kind of like a nice like you know badge of mm-hmm. honor. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool, a good story. So. Nice. I said the same thing, side of a bullet, pretty much exactly what you said. I liked uh, the, the music was pretty good, De- uh, lyrics are pretty decent, um, and uh, that X factor of the, the solo, pretty good. So, nice. yeah. All right. Well, uh, I originally said side of the bullet, but then changed it to someone that you're with. Uh, I, I chose side of the bullet because I'm like, I can't do both in the same song, and then I thought, well, why not? <laughs> <laughs> so I did. There you go. But yeah, side of the bullet was the runner up for the uh, Sleepy Dark Horse. Mm-hmm. It's. It's tough because it was a single, but then again, so were seven other songs yeah. on the side. Yeah, no, so, well, my, right. mine is a single as well. But uh, so that's is that the only song on the album that we all agreed wasn't bad? Which one? Side of a bullet. I sounds it wasn't like bad. It, did you like? Yeah. Did anyone not like if I uh, someone Some were with Thomas? You guys said it was like okay. okay. It was okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I didn't yeah. think it was bad. But, but that was I the only one we right. all picked right. for yeah. something. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, mine is even though it was a single. Um, I think it's almost a sleepy dark horse because it was a single. I like the animals. Yeah. yeah. As corny as it was, yep. as almost it was almost because it was almost comical to me. Right. How vulgar it was for a band that really shouldn't be that vulgar. No, they shouldn't. They have no and reason. No to. business. <laughs> and they're trying not only to be vulgar, but in like a cocky kind of way. And the lyrics really aren't great. Right. So they did it poorly. I don't know. All of that kind of comes together, and it kind of makes me laugh. Yeah. Like this isn't a bad song. It's true. Um, yeah. You know, I don't know. I just thought it punched the whole time, and I've always, always listened to that song, and it's kind of made me be like bob my head and laugh at the yep. same time. And mm-hmm. I've always thought like, yeah, this isn't bad. I will say that's probably my favorite out of the singles. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's a rocking song. Has good drums in it. So, yeah. Yeah. It's tier one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what is your tier that? one? Because you, you you do your scoring. Yeah, so a little different. I like I got someone that you're with, obviously, because it's my yep. favorite. Yep. Side of the Bullet is tier one. Yep. Animals is tier one. 
And I try and do it in thirds, but you know, it being Nickelback, then they're they're kind of short on tier ones. So those three, those okay. three are all I, tier one. I think I would agree with that. I mean, mm-hmm. that's it right there. Those are the takeaways for me yeah. for that album, for this album too. The rest of them are either twos or threes. Yep. Yeah. Let's rate it. Let's give it a good old, uh, good old rating. Go ahead, Trev. Well, uh, it's out of uh, ten. I had to get adjusted to the new ten format. Yeah, I take what you would have given it. Multiply it by two. I would have it by two. That's it. I would have given it a three out of five, but six out of ten sounds low. right. Exactly. So, I mean, I gotta, you gotta reassess. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a, a, a seven out of ten as a solid C, and that's okay. what I'm giving it. Seven. Wow. So wow. holy shit. Well, it's well, it's tough because wow. Um, because the, the grading scheme that you're used to out of 10, like 70 is a C, 80 right. is a B, you're not used to going below it's true. Uh, a 5. Right. Anything below 5 is just, it's it's thrown it's out. Already, yeah, so already really, enough. you're just grading out of 5 anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> he wanted the 10. <laughs> I'm just saying, that it's, 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 it's the, the same the, thing. The, grading out of 10 scheme is times uh, two. Yeah, kind okay. of misleading. I'm giving, it, I'm giving it a 3 out of 5. <laughs> because I can <laughs> because that's what I would have given <laughs> that's going to screw up his Excel sheet <laughs> it is uh, it's a 3 out of 5 but it's a 7 out of 10 <laughs> it's like metric like yeah. US metric yeah. conversion yeah I got it okay alright um, Michael dead center down the middle 5 out of 10 man even that's generous wow okay. I, I, I just wasn't that. It, listen <laughs> It was better than I expected it. Yeah. That's, okay. Yeah. It was better it than was. what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. It had a couple of those songs that, even the first two songs, they weren't bad. Right. They came in pretty decent. Yeah. So if you look at that, you got those two, Animals, right? Side of a Bullet, Someone You're With, Rockstar. Mm-hmm. That's half the album is right. not bad. Right. So, okay. five out of ten. Five out of ten. I'm going to give it... I guess it's not really that generous. I, I guess I'm right behind you. I'm going to give it a four and a half. Um, oh, yeah, that's great. Give me shit over that's half like a fucking point. <laughs> <laughs> for, oh, for that's two and a half out of five bobs. That makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> four, and five. four and a half bobs because that's probably how many good songs there are in the album. So, yeah, yeah. actually, I'm, I'm the same way. I'm giving it a four and a half as well. Okay, it was better than I thought it was, given the fact that everyone's like, Oh, Nickelback's the worst band ever. Mm-hmm. There's much worse options oh, you yeah. can choose from, yeah. But I understand why people don't like them at the same yeah. time. Oh, right. they bring it on themselves, right? You yeah, know, yeah, it's, but they own it. You know, well, they don't deserve as much shit as they get. They yeah. also make yes. a fuck ton of money. Yeah. So yeah, no, I, I can't. What's to be said about that? Yeah, exactly. I came to this podcast with one, like one goal, and that was to defend Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> and after listening to the album, it was a little bit harder than I anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> but you did a solid but job. I did it. A valiant <laughs> effort. Well done. Well, well done. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> but. Uh, you know, Circling back, four yeah, and a half, four and a half, five, and a three out of five. So, <laughs> but it's seven out of ten. <laughs> I love it. I'll give it oh, six great. and a half out of ten just to make it a little closer. All right, all right. <laughs> Circling back to the four local seltzer. Can we all just call it a zero? Can and I keep done. I'm giving it a zero. I, 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 would, I can't drink this again. I yeah, I'm not drinking it again. I think I don't know if I can get a, a zero though. That's that's like. I'd rather drink Robitussin. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think this is the definition of a zero. Uh, yeah. This is a zero. What other clean... alcoholic drink have you had that is worse than that? Like, except, uh, except for, oh, like, a, like a uh, warm, hold up, like... Hold up, Bud, uh, Bud, Light, Bud Light Clemente or whatever that was? No, yeah. this hold is that. on that hold level. On. Hold on. Like, yeah, like... Kamada, yeah. It was the clam juice. If you take any yeah. drink oh, cold out of yeah. the fridge, there's not Clamato. many things that are worse than that. And I don't like seltzers to begin with, either. So, they're, they're like, right in that same ballpark. What the hell is that? So Chilada? Bud Light yeah. Clamato Cl- is a Colada? Is that real? It's yes. tomato I've, clam juice. It's like, oh, yes. I've had that. I've had it. Disgusting. And that is probably the only thing I can say is worse than this. Bud- that I would give a negative one to. <laughs> the first negative <laughs> ever Bud Light score. clam. Well, wait a minute, well, we always... can find it and we'll bring it here. Yeah. If we can and do I that, promise you, we need to do you that. You might actually gag or vomit. Oh, that's that's the <laughs> Limp Bizkit album right there. Yeah, oh, sequel. Yeah, wow. sequel episode. Sequel. That's it, right? That and, right. and it's got to be this group: Bud Light, Clamato, 
uh, and limp yeah, biscuit, whatever. The decided. Thing I mean, say what yeah. you want about the four loco, at least it's not salty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's right. True. You know, I mean, <laughs> but it's a zero. I would never drink it again. Zero. It's I, got no redeeming no. factor. It doesn't even taste like black cherry. If you like told me that this was the only <laughs> alcohol left in your house, I still wouldn't drink it. That's how you know it's bad. <laughs> this is true. What did I give the? Uh, you drank a lot. Lemon meringue. You gave the lemon meringue a one. I did <laughs> give it a one. You gave it a one. Yes. All right, I'm going to give it a 0.5 for the can design. <laughs> so I really like the can. I like I like the silver can. Model. Okay. With the with the purpley grape. Uh, okay. AKA black cherry purple grape cherry. 0.5 for Joe. Someone someone hung a, a cherry around it yeah. while it was being made. Yeah, and that's little, the, that's little the hint. job around the can. That's the hint of it. Yeah. No. Well, oh there you go, God. the torture episode. Oh, we, yeah. I see the light at the end of the yes. tunnel. The zero is both out of five and out of ten, by the way. <laughs> it is, yes. It is. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Yeah, <laughs> for, for the record, for the record. Well, awesome, awesome. There you go. Uh, what? What's next? Oh, this next episode is going to be a great one. shout them out real quick. We we shout them out. Shout out for Loco team. Out? Or whatever it is, I can't find. I'm, I'm so, Team Avril, though. <laughs> I've never even heard of this. This is Four Brewing Company in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Do you think, a little, yeah, a little you local think, brewery. Go check them out. The ID is for like Weed? we're intellectually disabled. <laughs> <laughs> The ID. Hey, save yeah. the environment. They do care about recycling. Oh, good. I have a feeling yeah, you find a lot ones. of these on the side of the road. <laughs> the full ones they recycle. The, uh, the website, 4 we're probably the only hit on their website in maybe years. You went to it earlier, right? I did. I did go to it before. Oh, yeah. I, did, yeah. I, I mean, it. who's really help. going to 4 Not a lot of people. <laughs> no. Um, so... They're well, word of mouth advertising, though. Word yeah, of mouth. yeah they're they're it's doing spreading. something right because they're around. And then you got Nickelback, of course. Uh, uh, probably oh, just Nickelback yeah. on Instagram. You, you know yeah, how to there find Nickelback. I'm yeah. sure, you know, it's, if, so Google if Nickelback, you, you'll find them. If Seven, you really want to find they, them, you'll find they them. They sell it at the convenience store like two minutes down the street. No, because that, that shows for all products. I tried doing that before. Oh, this is Fruit Punch Apple Sour. Yeah, you can't oh. find the seltzers on there. Because yeah. I think they stopped right. making them after a while, which is good good Shocker. call on their part. Call. But, um... All right, yeah. All right. I'm going to close out of that Next one. episode. Next episode is going to be a great one. Episode Marcus. 54. 54. It's our guilty pleasures episode. Yeah. This is an idea we've kind of circled. I think it was Mike's idea. Yeah. Um, and I don't we, want to take, you know, all the credit. No. Yeah, I'm taking all the yeah, credit. Yeah, yeah, thanks. And, uh, yeah, so we're, we're going with our guilty pleasures. Trevor, you're joining us, right, for I the next be. episode? That's yeah. right. He yeah. brought some of Same clothes, too. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try and We're dress waiting the one exact week to same. record. Yeah, <laughs> actually, all of us I think should dress the exact same way for the next. I gotta yeah. wash it. Yeah, later, yeah. You know. yeah. We'll, at the we'll, same time, yeah. we'll do a quick later. load. So what we're doing is we each pick a few of our it's own <laughs> guilty pleasure songs yeah. that we are, you know, embarrassed to like, but yes. no shame anyway. And then we've each picked um, our own guilty pleasure beverage beverage That's that we will be drinking. Is. Like it. And we're just gonna sit around and chat and and embarrass ourselves and defend ourselves at the same time mm -hmm. and uh, enjoy what each other has to say. That's so, right, yeah. Guilty Sweet. pleasures. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah. Be fun. Awesome. So uh, that's been episode 53 of the Hops and Bobs podcast. Thank you so much for listening and watching. This is awesome. That's right. Uh, so be sure to uh, follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook. We're streaming on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can watch us on YouTube now. I got to like edit the, my, yeah, my know, right? line now. Yeah. It's going to throw me for a loop. Uh, but for Mike, Tom, and our lovely guest, Trevor, I'm Joe. We'll see you next time. Peace! <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs>